What's the price tag for dominance at sea? Try more than $11 billion. That's the cost of a single ship. The USS John F. Kennedy, CVN-79. She isn't just another aircraft carrier. She's the second Ford-class supercarrier, built to launch more planes, generate more power, and project more force than any warship before her. But here's the question, does she live up to that promise, or is she a multi-billion dollar gamble? Let's find out. To understand the John F. Kennedy, you first have to understand why the Ford class exists at all. By the late 1990s, the Navy's Nimitz-class carriers were already showing their age. Their design traced back to the 1960s, and even with upgrades, limitations were clear. High crew requirements, limited electrical power, and steam catapults that stressed modern aircraft. The Navy needed something new, something built for the 21st century. That need gave rise to the Ford class, with clear objectives to reduce crew size, increase sortie rates, and create a platform capable of integrating future technology such as directed energy weapons and unmanned aircraft, the program was launched. CVN-78, the USS Gerald R. Ford, was the lead ship of the class. Following her, CVN-79, the USS John F. Kennedy, serves as a critical follow-on, refining lessons learned from the Ford's costly developmental challenges to deliver a more optimized and efficient carrier. Her contract was signed in 2011. The keel was laid in 2015. In December of 2019, she was christened with a bottle of American sparkling wine instead of the traditional champagne, honoring her namesake's Irish heritage. And now, in 2025, she's nearing delivery to the fleet. Has the Kennedy seen combat? Not yet. She hasn't even been commissioned. Instead, she's undergoing outfitting, testing, and trials. Remember, Ford herself only wrapped up shock trials in 2021, proving the ship could withstand near-miss explosions. Kennedy will go through her own rigorous testing before she carries aircraft in combat. So right now, her story isn't about battles fought, but about readiness, ensuring she's capable of joining the fleet for the next 50 years. Now let's talk about what Kennedy brings to the table. At full load, she displaces around 100,000 tons. She stretches over 1,090 feet long, with a flight deck wide enough to launch and recover dozens of jets at a time. Her power plant, two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, providing nearly three times the electrical output of a Nimitz-class carrier. That's not just about propulsion, it's about powering the future. Kennedy has margin for all of it. Her flight deck is designed for speed. EMALS, the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, replaces steam catapults, giving smoother, less stressful launches. The Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG, handles recoveries with similar precision, built to support both heavy strike fighters and lighter unmanned systems. Together, these systems should boost sortie rates by more than 30% compared to Nimitz carriers, up to 160 flights a day, with surge rates of 270 in combat. Weapons movement has also been revolutionized. The advanced weapons elevators use electromagnetic systems instead of cables and hydraulics, cutting rearm times dramatically. Deep inside, digital control systems reduce manpower demands, while modernized living quarters improve quality of life for sailors. On the sensor front, Kennedy is fitted with the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, a scalable, advanced system built to improve detection and tracking across air and surface threats. In short, Kennedy isn't just a carrier, she's a floating airbase optimized for 21st century warfare. So how does Kennedy protect herself? She's no battleship bristling with big guns, but she carries a layered defensive suite. Close-in weapons like the Phalanx Sea Whiz provide last-ditch protection against incoming missiles. CRAM adds quick-reaction missile defense, while evolved Sea Sparrow missiles expand her protective bubble. Soft kill systems, electronic jammers, decoys, and countermeasures help confuse or blind attackers. But remember, a carrier doesn't fight alone. Her true shield is the carrier strike group, Aegis cruisers, destroyers, submarines, and the air wing working in concert. So what makes Kennedy superior? First, sortie generation. She's built to launch and recover more aircraft in less time. Second, efficiency, automation, and improved design cut crew requirements by nearly 800 sailors compared to a Nimitz. Over decades, that saves billions. Third, future-proofing. 
Kennedy's nuclear reactors provide enough power for systems we haven't even fielded yet, from directed energy weapons to advanced drone control, and finally, survivability. Redesigned hull sections and compartmentalization improve resilience against damage. But no ship is without problems. The Ford class has been criticized for reliability issues. Emails and AAG underperformed in early testing, with failure rates higher than expected. The advanced weapons elevators were years late in reaching operational status. Kennedy will still have to prove these systems in real-world conditions. And then, there's training. Fewer sailors doesn't mean less work. It means sailors need broader, more technical skills. That's a steep demand on a new generation of crew. Let's talk dollars. Kennedy's cost sits around $11.3 billion. That's cheaper than Ford's $13.3 billion, but still the most expensive warship on Earth. Critics argue that investing so heavily in a single platform creates risk. Supporters counter that carriers remain the ultimate symbol of American global power and that long-term savings, smaller crews, longer reactor life, and greater sortie generation will offset the price tag. Time will tell which side is right. Let's address the viral images. Kennedy, already showing streaks of rust before she's even sailed. Is America's newest supercarrier falling apart at the dock? Not exactly. That rust you see is surface oxidation, common during construction and fitting out. When steel sits exposed to the elements before final coatings are applied, you'll see surface rust. It's normal in shipyards and doesn't affect the structural integrity of the hull. The bigger reason Kennedy isn't sailing yet isn't rust. It's integration. Advanced systems like emails, AAG, and the elevators take years to install and certify. Delays are frustrating, and optics matter. To the public, a rusty-looking ship stuck at the pier looks like failure. To the Navy, it's business as usual, painful, slow, but necessary to get a ship this complex right. In fact, the same thing happened with the Ford. Rusty streaks in photos, but after years of testing, she deployed in 2022. Kennedy will follow the same path. So where does Kennedy fit in? She'll be the centerpiece of a carrier strike group, surrounded by destroyers, cruisers, submarines, and logistics ships. Her job is global power projection. From the Mediterranean to the Pacific, Kennedy will carry an air wing of F-35C, F-A-18 Super Hornets, EA-18G Growlers, helicopters, and eventually unmanned aircraft. In a world of rising great power competition, she's America's insurance policy on the high seas. As of 2025, Kennedy isn't ready to deploy. But by the time she does, she'll be one of the most advanced warships afloat. So here's the bottom line. The USS John F. Kennedy, CVN-79, is more than just a warship. She's a statement, a promise that the US Navy will continue to dominate the seas into the mid-21st century. With advanced launch systems, powerful reactors, and room for future weapons, Kennedy represents the future of American naval power. But with enormous cost and lingering questions about reliability, she also represents the Navy's biggest gamble. What do you think? Is the Ford class worth the price, or should the Navy rethink the carrier model altogether? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more deep dives into the world's most advanced military technology, don't forget to hit subscribe, give this video a like, and join the conversation. Thanks for watching.